Hello, everybody. So my name is uh, Vincent Liege or Vincent. Uh, I'm very glad to be here today and to have this conversation with uh, Anitra because uh, a few months ago, Anitra had this uh, strange, funny idea to invite me to cooperate and to work together on a book which uh, became Exploring Degrowth, a Critical Guide, which will be uh, published very soon in, uh, at uh, Pluto Press. So Anitra, why such a funny idea to work with me? Well, it really came from some of my colleagues at Pluto Press because we were starting this fireworks series at Pluto Press. And we thought, what are the kinds of topics that people, especially in the United Kingdom, the United States, English speaking countries, think that they need to know more about. They see it on the internet, they see it in papers, but they don't get a kind of explanation of what this means. And I think we wanted a series that focuses on movements and on ideas. And so my colleagues said, degrowth, that would be really good. You know something about that. And I think originally when I approached you, the idea was, was that I gave you the job to do. And then somehow we sort of ended up because we had a very short period of time to work on it, doing it together. And I think actually it's worked really well as a collaboration. Yeah, it was definitely a collaboration. So it works a bit that uh, I wrote something uh, like a first draft, uh, not the best English and so on. So I'm very grateful for you to help me to improve uh, this English and so on. And uh, I had the opportunity to share uh, a large experience, maybe the deepest experience amongst the degrowth networks and movements because I've been involved in the French degrowth movement for 15 years. The French degrowth movement started 18 years ago. Most of the pillars or the pioneers of degrowth uh, mostly work, uh, worked and published in French. So I had a lot to share with the Anglo-Saxon network. So I would say that uh, it was very important to share all these things. And also the, the degrowth movement in France was much more politicized and political than the Anglo-Saxon one with the international, uh, internationalization of degrowth after the 2008 Paris International Degrowth Conference. Uh, a wonderful work has been made, but mostly in academics, which is, I think, very important and fundamental. And um, most of the publication and it's gonna change this year with the publication of a lot of books, but most of the publication on degrowth were mostly in academics and were not shared with uh, people who are not academics, with uh, students, younger generation, with uh, activists, with uh, just citizen or politician. And I think it's very important to, to publish such a book, our, uh, uh, Exploring Degrowth, and also the other book published by a lot of our friends, which will be published very soon. It's very important to to, to make a synthesis about what's been going on in the last 20 years, almost 20 years, in these debates around degrowth and what do we propose as a political agenda, what kind of political strategy, what has already been experienced on the ground, how do we connect the dots between different levels of action, between different types of movement, uh, what degrowth has to address to an uh, emerging wonderful movement, what we could see in the last two years, like Extinction Rebellion, like uh, use for climate, the march for climate, and, and all the debates around these topics. Yes, and I think I found the chapter three a really interesting in the way that we try and uh, give a kaleidoscope of the different kinds of activities that different uh, degrowth activists and degrowth theorists, for that matter, are involved with, starting with voluntary simplicity, which is a, a, a kind of uh, misnomer in certain ways. A lot of people who don't know much about degrowth often will confuse it with voluntary simplicity just as a whole idea in itself, as a very individualistic kind of, um, of aim. But I love the way that we're able to introduce frugal abundance and all kinds of very strong degrowth ideas into the kind of calculations that a degrowth activist will go through, looking at their life and just trying to inch it along and make it more and more degrowth so that they can actually embody degrowth because showing other people what degrowth is is probably more important than telling them 
what it is. Yeah, the chapter three is very interesting because it's a bit like uh, the articulation of all the themes and all the dimension of degrowth we try to put uh, around. So this degrowth is a bit absurd because it started from a, uh, a word, uh, a semantic tool invented by somebody who's coming from advertisement and who wanted to provocate the system. And since its beginning, and it's still uh, criticized, uh, since its beginning, the world has been criticized for creating a type of uh, confusion uh, to uh, a type of uh, misunderstanding around the world. But from these, these misunderstandings, a lot emerged, a lot of debate emerged. And one of the main forces of degrowth, on the contrary to a lot of other slogans which have been used in the last two decades, that degrowth was not co-opted was not emptied from its content because it brings in its semantic, in its soul, a radical critics to our system and it's an invitation to uh, decolonize our imaginary, something that we try to explain also in, uh, in the book. And uh, starting from this provocative slogan, we go to the pioneers of degrowth and the pillars, the intellectual and theoretical pillars, where you find a very, very uh, strong complementary uh, literature, starting from uh, uh, a very old time ago, uh, through the 19th century, I think about uh, um, utopian socialism, for example, or we quote uh, Paul Lafargue and the right to be lazy, uh, to uh, uh, famous degrowth pioneers like Ivan Illich, like André Gors, like Cornelius Castoriadis, and so on. And you have this third chapter, you're making the articulation between how when you are on the ground in your permacultural uh, workshop or uh, when you are dealing with the voluntary simplicity and you mentioned frugal abundance, I much prefer speaking about frugal abundance, which is a type of provocation as well, inviting us to, to reflect on that. How Castoriadis or Illich are uh, uh, bringing some uh, great um, question to, uh, to make it uh, uh, enjoyable and so on. And uh, after we move to the next two chapters, which are much more on political strategy, how to change the world without taking the power. But we shouldn't let it in the hands of uh, the idiots which are uh, governing our countries nowadays, from Orban to Macron, from, uh, from Trump to, uh, to, uh, to uh, Boris Johnson, for example. And, and last chapter is more policy recommendation oriented, and it's quite influenced by the book that we co-wrote with uh, my friends in France called uh, uh, A Degrowth Project and the notion of uh, unconditional autonomy allowance. And um, going through the writing of the book, we, we were also facing a lot of problems because when um, in the hard times there was a huge fires in, in Australia and when we were finalizing the, uh, the book, we, uh, we were in confinement. That's exactly right. It was like the world was collapsing around us as we were trying to uh, give birth and voice to a new kind of world. So the debate is going on, and we hope that we bring a lot of food for thought. Um, we, the main goal of the book is to open debate, it's to share a lot of things, what we could observe in the degrowth networks and relative networks in the last two decades, and we try to connect all these ideas, all this activism, all these debates, all this discussion, all this proposal. We try to connect the dots, and we hope that we can offer a good platform for meaningful discussion, because now we are at the end of this confinement, uh, we are about to face a strong uh, economic crisis with the terrible consequences for a lot of people all around the world. Uh, climate change, biodiversity loss is still going on. Scarcity of resources is about to happen if you try to relaunch stupidly the economy, what main, uh, mainstream politicians try to do like us. So more than ever, we need degrowth and we need the debate on degrowth. So follow us. Uh, read the book and so on. It's about to be published and uh, feel free to share your question, your comments before reading the book. So thanks for listening to us and thanks a lot, Anitra, for this great cooperation. Terrific. Thank you.